Good morning. Good morning, church family. Can you all hear me on Facebook? If you can, give me a thumbs up or something. Let me know that, that you can hear me. I need this communication to be very clear. Good morning, Brandy. Greetings to you from Alabama. Good morning, Rashid. Good morning, all of my Instagram family as well. I'm excited because I, I think I have a word this morning that um, that will usher us into uh, blessings. Good morning to all of you. I'm excited to be here. Good morning, Minister Bush. Good morning, Miss Lovely Howard. Sarah Rita King, all of you. Good morning. Good morning, Key. Good morning, all of you. I'm glad to have you all uh, here this morning. I love this part of the week. I get the opportunity to teach, which is my passion. And those of you who are open to receive and to learn, um, I believe that I can usher you into some places that um, where God can, can really bless you. You just have to be patient with teaching. And I absolutely miss you all. I miss you. People have been asking me when we are, when are we going back into the church building. Some people are more eager than others, but um, I tell you, I'm not so eager to get back in there until things are right. I would never, I would never drag you all or even attempt to uh, drag you into a situation that will be detrimental. Uh, detrimental to your health. I, I just can't, I can't do that as a, as a leader. And so, um, and so I'll just continue to teach online, uh, until we can get back into the building. And I know when we get back in there, it's going to be epic. I cannot wait. And I know epic is played out, but, uh, but yeah, we're going to turn up for real. But until then, we'll just continue to teach um, those of you who have your Bible with you, turn with me to Proverbs 18, 12, and we'll use this verse as our, uh, foundational verse for where we're going. I want to talk about the honor code today. Uh, and one of the reasons God gave me this message on honor is because honor is going to unlock some doors that would have never been open. And some of us will have to go back and uh, undo some things. Uh, so that it can open those doors that have been sh uh, slammed in our faces due to the lack of honor. You know, so this is a positive message. It is a message that um, that I believe that will propel you uh, to uh, new levels uh, with God and your relationship with him. And it'll also uh, take you back to some places where there have where there might have been dishonor, uh, where you can fix those things. So that you can walk into those doors because I believe that some people are at a halt right now. Some people are at a halt and a standstill and they don't know why. And so and I believe that this message will open your eyes to some things and help you uh, to see things from a different perspective. Uh, so let us pray first. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this beautiful morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I pray that you would give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church and that you will give us eyes that we may see things from a, a spiritual standpoint. We thank you for your faithfulness. Even when we are unfaithful, you remain faithful. So we honor you for that. We thank you for uh, providing all of our needs according to your riches and glory. We might not have everything that we want, but we thank you that we have everything that we need. We pray that you would touch all the hearers uh, all over this country this morning, that you would touch the people in our world, in our nation. We pray that you would heal uh, from this corona virus, the this, this COVID-19. We pray that you protect our minds, our bodies, and our spirits during this pandemic. 
We give you honor uh, for who you are, not just because of what you've done. Uh, we look to the hills from which comes our help because we know that our help comes from the Lord. We pray for the sick, the homebound. We pray for the oppressed, depressed. And we pray for those who are in mental institutions. And we pray for those who are incarcerated this morning. We pray that you will meet them at their point of need and that you will supply all of their needs. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. For we ask this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior. Amen. Okay, so um, Proverbs 18, chapter 18, verse 12. We'll use this as our foundational verse. Uh, good morning to those of you who are just coming in. I see a lot of my church family on here, community uh, and associates, friends. Uh, glad to have you this morning. But turn with me to Proverbs 18, verse 12. And we'll read this verse and then I'll dive in and give you some information that I believe uh, will be essential, uh, that will be a blessing to you. Uh, we want to talk about the honor code. Honor will get you a long way. Honor will take you a long way. Uh, but 1812 says this, uh, before destruction, a man's heart is haughty. The word haughty means lifted. Uh, but humility comes before honor. I want you to lock in on that. Humility comes before honor. Before you can even show honor, you have to humble yourself enough to do that. You know, so in order to even be receptive to this message this morning, uh, you will have to you have to receive it in a spirit of humility. You know, so so ask God to humble your spirit because he's going to ask you to do some things that might not be really easy for you to do. But if you do those things, then it will actually give you access into doors and places that you would not have been able to get in. You know, so in order to admit, Lord, I have not always been honorable. Uh, you have to humble yourself enough because we're getting ready to deal with some things as it relates to parents and 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 fathers and mothers. And, you know, because at some point there's probably been some dishonor there and you might feel that you had a right or a reason to feel or, or to dishonor certain things. But I'm going to show you how to I'm going to show you how to deal with that and still be able to move along, because at some point you have to honor people, but you may have to honor them at a distance. You know, and, and that's OK. We'll get to that in a moment. But I want to start out by saying uh, before uh, before honor, humility has to come first. Humility has to come first. So so I'm asking, Lord, even while we're teaching this message, I'm asking that you would humble the listeners enough uh, to the point that where they can be receptive to this truth, because essentially it's going to usher you into places that you could not get into before because you're going to have to learn how to honor even when your feelings are telling you to do otherwise, you know, because honor is not something that you do or that you give based on how you feel, you, you know, because because we usually are a people who are emotional. We're always emotional about things. And we usually handle situations based on how we feel at the moment. So what I'm asking you all to do is to ask God to help you to divorce your feelings just for a moment. Divorce, divorce your feelings. And what I'm saying by that is to help you to think on a plain level where you can actually get something accomplished. You know, don't I need you to receive this message apart from just being in your feelings. I need you to just hear what the spirit is saying to you so that you can act on what God is saying. OK, so uh, once again, humility must come first. If you cannot humble yourself enough to be receptive, then you're not going to get anywhere this morning. And so why is honor so important? Those of you who are taking notes, I need you to I need you to get this. The first reason honor is important is because honor unlocks doors that would not have been open without it. Honor unlocks doors that would not have been unlocked without the honor being in place. And so to say it another way, when honor is in place, doors will fly open. When honor is in place, doors will fly open. Because there have been some doors that we have been knocking on. There are some doors that we've been trying to kick open, but we still find ourselves without access. And it's because the magic code to get those doors open 
is to ask yourself, how have I honored the people that God has placed in my life? How have I honored the people that raised me? How have I honored the people who has been the conduit for me to get from one level to the next? How have I honored the leaders that uh, God has placed in my life? How have I honored my family? How have I honored uh, all of those folk that God have given access uh, to my life? So honor unlocks doors. Uh, secondly, honor produces favor from others. Honor produces favor from others. When you are an honorable individual, people want to do things for you. When you are a person of honor, you will always find favor with people in high positions. Because there are some people who have access to things that you don't and to places that you don't. And when you learn how to honor right, they will give you access to the things that they have access to. And some of us think that we can get places just because of our names. And we think that we can get into places just because of who we are. But I need you to understand that there are some places that you will not be able to get into unless you learn how to honor right. You have to learn how to honor. And for some um, for some people this morning, it's a humbling experience. But I promise you that it will be well worth you humbling yourself. OK, so uh, honor produces favor from others. Uh, thirdly, honor pleases God. I want to learn how to honor because it pleases God. And when God is pleased with your life, knowing that he has the key to everything that you need access to, when he finds honor, he moves on your behalf. Wherever God finds honor, he moves on your behalf. Yes, when God finds honor, it pleases him. And because he's pleased, he moves on your behalf. And so you will have access that that dishonorable people won't have access to. You will have access to things that dishonorable people, because all of us are surrounded by people who may not be honorable. We all have relatives, friends, associates who are not as honorable as we choose to be. OK, and, and once you begin to honor right, they might not understand the type of access that God is going to give you. And it's OK. They won't understand the type of access. They'll wonder how they can be walking with you and not have access to the things that you have access to. And it all has to do and it traces back to how we honor. How we honor. Fourthly, honor grants promotions. And we'll get to the text in a minute. Uh, honor grants promotions. If you want to experience elevation, you must learn how to honor now. And when you honor, that means that you don't speak on everything. Sometimes in order to preserve your, your honor for people and especially your honor for God, there are some conversations that you need to check out of. I don't know who that's for, but I know it's for somebody. Because people will draw you into conversations that will taint your spirit and cause you to spew dishonor. If it has nothing to do with you, this is the season that you got to keep your mouth off of it. Don't let people call you with it. Don't let people text you with it. Don't let people draw you into uh, conversations and circumstances that has absolutely nothing to do with the business that God wants to give you, the business ideas that God wants to give you, the places that God wants to give you access to. If it has nothing to do with your next level, I need you to check out of it. Check out of it because the enemy is trying to pull you into a level of dishonor that will hinder your blessings. And the scripture teaches us in Psalm chapter one, blessed, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. You know, so so there are some people that you have to. Let me say it this way. There are some people that you have to purge yourself away from. You have to purge them out of your life. You have to, in order for you to get to your next level. Sometimes your next level does not have room for the messy people in your life. 
I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I feel like preaching. Your next level does not have room for messy people, but your next level does have room for honorable people. OK, so if you're walking with people who live in dishonor, that means that you are walking with someone who is not even equally yoked with what, what you're trying to do and where you're trying to go. Amen. So uh, and, and fifthly, honor is essential for your next level. In order for see, watch this. God is getting ready to take somebody higher, but in order to remain higher, See, because God can take you higher, but some people don't have the capacity or the ability to remain there. If you learn how to honor, God will give you the ability to keep you in those elevated places. To keep you in those elevated places. As a child of God, you should have an expectation of from God, and you should also have an expectation on your life to go higher. There is no way that you, you should be calling yourself a child of God and never expect to come out of your situation. Now, that mandate or that expectation you can place on God because God will pull you out of places that are detrimental to your next level. And so honor is essential for your next level. And then lastly, this is why honor is so important. Honor attracts God. And it breeds honor from him. Honor attracts God. And it breeds honor from him. And I want you to look real quick at 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 30. Somebody type that in. First Samuel chapter two, verse 30. I've gotten excited already. And I'm going to show you the people that you need to honor. And, and this is very important. If you want to get into those doors, you cannot bypass honor. You cannot do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't care what they say. I don't care. I don't care what they're preaching, what they're telling you. I don't care what you think. The only thing that matters is what God says. And you cannot get to another level and remain on that level if you are living in dishonor. Because dishonor always brings you below the level that you should be living. Dishonor always brings you below the level that you should be living. And so I'm going to set some of you all free here in a moment. Second Samuel chapter 2 uh, verse 30 I'm going to tell you what God says here. Uh, this is what he says in verse 30. He says, um, he says, far be it from me, far be it from me for those who honor me. This is what God says. Those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me will be lightly esteemed. God says, if you honor me, in return, I'm going to honor you. He says, but if you despise me, you will be lightly esteemed. When people esteem you, they lift you up. When people esteem you, they raise you higher. God says you cannot despise me and expect to be esteemed. He says, but if you honor me, I'll make sure that others honor you. Not only will I make sure that others honor you, he says, but I will honor you. And for God to say out of his mouth that he will honor you. Hey, that's all the honor that you need because honor breeds honor. Somebody type that in. Honor breeds honor. If you are an individual who is walking in dishonor, you might as well expect everything that you're trying to accomplish to fail. You cannot dishonor the, the perimeters the people and the things that God places in your life to make sure that you are a stable individual. You cannot dishonor what God places in your life and expect him to honor outside of those realms. He's not going to do it. It doesn't matter if it looked like it's blessed. It doesn't matter if it feels, feels like it's blessed. 
ultimately it will fail. Why? Because you are walking in dishonor. And that's why I said at the onset of this message that some people will have to humble their hearts. They'll have to go back and fix the things that are messed up. And in order to do that, you got to humble yourself. You have to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you when in due season. In due season, honor breeds dishonor. And let me go ahead and drop this on you. Some people will not understand your level of honor for other people. They won't understand it. To them, uh, you running behind this person, you all up under them, you show them too much honor, you respect them more than you respect God. And they, uh, listen, come on now. God is always first and foremost. You know, God is always first and foremost. You must put him first. If you honor man more than you honor God, then something is wrong. Something is wrong with that honor. Let me let me get to some some other information here I need to drop on you. Honor is a social term. Stay with me because our, our ability to listen to teaching. I know how I know how it is. Our, our attention deficit <laughs> disorders. Honor is a social term. Describing how people within a society evaluate one another. When we are talking about honor, we are talking about how someone views you. Okay, and, and, and the word evaluate means to set a value or an amount on something. It also means an appraisal. And so let me say it in simple terms. When a person gives you honor, they have evaluated you as an individual and they have placed a value on you based on the value that they have placed on you based on how they see you will determine how much honor they show toward you. OK, so if you don't, if, if when people look at you and appraise you as an individual, if when they appraise you, if you don't mean much to them, that means that there will be less honor showed toward you. So whereas one person may have a high value or a high appraisal of you as an individual, there may be someone walking with them who may not have that same appraisal of you. And so they may see you or view you differently and they will show you a different type of honor. Honor is always based on how you view the other individual or how they view you. OK, so so you won't you might not have the level of respect for an individual that I have because they mean more to me than they mean to you. So based on what they mean to you and how you see them will determine the level of honor you show to those individuals. Some people love their mothers and their fathers. And because you love your mother and your father, you give them the highest, highest level of, of honor that is possible to give to a parent. You know, and you might have a person that you love, but you don't value them like you value your parents. And because you value your parents the way you do, the level of honor you show them will always supersede that which you show somebody else. The other people may not understand it, you know, but that's how honor works. Listen, I need somebody to hear this. Where there is no honor, there is no value. Where there is no honor, there is no value. People will not honor something they don't value. They will not honor and see, some of you are trying to force people to honor you. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to force people to see something in you that they either don't want to see or don't see. And so honor is not something that should be fabricated. When we're talking about honor, we, we were talking about something that comes from the heart. When we're talking about honor, we're talking about something that flows from the heart. You want a person to, if they're going to honor you, you want it to be sincere. Because there is a, a, a such thing as false honor or honor that people show others publicly knowing that they cannot stand you privately. 
Okay? And so where there is no honor, there is no value. And if there is no value or honor, it leads to disrespect. It leads to disrespect. This is one of the reasons why a lot of our youth, they are so disrespectful to their parents because when they appraise their parents, their appraisal is very low. Their appraisal is very low. And to them, uh, it's okay for them to uh, disrespect them because they don't honor them. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. How you, how people treat you will ultimately let, how people treat you will ultimately let you know what level of honor they attribute to you. How you treat me will determine how much you honor me. Or how I treat you will determine how much I honor you. So you can say you honor me, but if, if how you treat me is contrary to what's coming out of your mouth, there is a, a contradiction and what you're saying is diametrically opposed to what you're doing. Okay? And so, if they treat you bad, if they treat you bad, something has caused them to lower their level of honor they show toward you. If they treat you well, their reason to honor you outweighs any level of dishonor they show toward you. Okay, so let me give you a few definitions. <laughs> let me give you a few definitions here. The root of the, there is a, a, a Greek word that I want to give you. It's, it's spelled K-A-B-O-D, kabod. I need y'all to type that in for me. I, I have to teach you before I get out of here. Kabod. It literally means heavy or weight. It literally means heavy or it means weight. K-A-B-O-D. That's a Greek word. I mean, a Hebrew word. Kabod. It means heavy and it means weight. Figuratively, it means to give weight to someone. To give weight to someone. There are certain people in your life who hold weight. This is going to make sense. There are certain people in your life who hold weight. In essence, when you hear their name, it makes you straighten up. When you hear their name, it does something to you. Because of your level of honor for them, when they come around, it calls you, it causes you to function on all cylinders. And the reason when certain people come around, it causes you to live how you're supposed to live, be how you're supposed to be. It's because they hold weight in your life. Everybody needs people in their life who holds weight. So that when you get out of line, those people that you honor and that you respect can help you to slide right back in line, right? If you don't have those type of people in your life, then you need to get them in your life ASAP. To honor someone then means is to give weight or grant a person a position. When you honor someone, you grant them position. You grant them status, you grant, you grant them wealth, but it can also mean that you grant them honor based on their character, based on their character. Now, now listen to this. I'm, I'm getting ready to drop something heavy on you. There will be times when you will have to honor people from a distance because of their character. There will, there will be people that you love or who you love that you will have to honor from a distance because of their character. 
There will be people that you love. Now, I'm going to give you three three type of people that you have to honor or three people that you have to honor. One, and I'm getting ready to give you some scripture. One, the first person you need to honor is the Lord. Somebody type that in. The first person you need to honor is the Lord. You, your honor for anybody else is not real honor if you are not honoring God first. Honor the Lord. Pro Proverbs 3 and verse 9. This is going to unlock some things for you. So I need you to listen to this. Proverbs 3 and verse 9. It says, honor the Lord from your wealth. And before you click off the video, I'm not talking about money. Because some of you all got, some of you all have uh, money and wealth or riches confused. So, uh, so don't, don't click out the video. Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce. So, and, and listen, so your barns will be filled with plenty. Okay, so, so when the scripture here in Proverbs 3, 9 is talking about honor the Lord from your wealth. It's talking about honoring God from your life. Not just honoring God from your pockets, but honoring God from your wealth. Wealth is more than money. Wealth has to do with your health. Wealth has to do with your financial uh, uh, status. Wealth has to do with your mental capacity. Wealth has to do with all of that. Wealth encompasses more than money. And so when the writer says, honor the Lord from your wealth, what he's talking about is honor God from, from every part of you. Every part of you that God has allowed you to prosper, you need to honor God with that. If you have a sharp mind, you honor God with your mind. If you have finances, you honor God from your finances. If you have a, a thriving business, you honor God from your business. Whatever God has allowed you to acquire on this side of heaven, then the scripture teaches us that it is essential and very important that we honor him from our wealth and from the first fruit of all of our produce. Anything that God allows to come in, you must have you must show gratitude toward him for allowing that door to be open. I need you to hear me and I need you to hear me right now. You can be up today and God can close every door that he's given you access to and you can be filing chapter 13 or chapter 11 by tomorrow. And so it is it is very important that you honor God from your wealth. And your wealth Stop trying to compare yourself to somebody else's wealth. What might be wealth to you might not be wealth to somebody else. You know, so don't compare yourself to anyone else. You do uh, for the Lord what you can from what he has given you. And then he's made a guarantee in the same verse. What is the guarantee? So your borns will be filled with plenty. And so what he's saying is that when you honor me from what I have given you, you will never run out. I was talking to someone dear to me uh, the other day and I was I made a very bold statement, a very bold statement. And the reason I can make that bold statement is because of my relationship with God. I told them, I said, I will never go without. I will never go without as long as I live. I will never go without. And uh, and that's a bold statement to make. Why could I make that statement? Because my statement was built on the word of God. If you give and if you take care of the kingdom of God, then God has a responsibility to take care of you. Secondly, let me say it this way. You cannot beat God given. Somebody, somebody type that in. And I'm not just talking about your money. Type this in. Your time, talent, and your treasure. You cannot beat God given. You cannot beat God given, period. He, God will never allow you to outgive him. He'll never allow you to do it. So we don't give to get, 
but we get as a direct consequence of giving. Okay? And so, so some of you get ready to be blessed on a whole different level. And let me just go ahead and drop this on you. Some people around you are not going to understand your next level. And if you don't understand my next level, then that means that you're not ready to go there with me. I'm sorry. Just because you work for me in one season does not mean you're going to work for me in the next season. Because as because when seasons change, people grow. You you have to grow into certain seasons in your life. OK, and if I'm growing, if God is growing me and preparing me for the next season in my life and you're with me, but you're not growing, that means that uh, part of our relationship is going to have to end here. We can still be acquainted. We can still be friends, but I cannot bring you into a season that you are not ready for. And, and furthermore, if you cannot celebrate what God is getting ready to do in my life, then that is that is all the more reason to show me that you are not ready to go with me. You are not ready to go with me. You know, so honor opens doors and honor keeps your barns filled. And so God says, if you honor me from your will, he didn't say with your wealth. Don't 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 get it twisted. He said, don't you don't you don't. He's not talking about honor me with your wealth. He says, honor me from your wealth, from your wealth. Amen. That means that you don't have to think about it. It becomes a part of who you are. Some people have to honor God from their wealth. But God says, honor me with he says, honor me from your wealth, not just with it. Now. He also says uh, you won't run out. You won't run out. Because this is what the scripture says. Your vat will overflow with new wine. I looked up the word vat and the word vat is a large container or a tub or a tank. And, and so what the scriptures is saying here is that when you honor God with what he's giving, given you, then you might as well just bring containers in because you're getting ready to experience overflow. Some people cannot experience overflow because they don't honor God with what they have. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just I have to put that out there. If you have never experienced overflow, you need to you need to evaluate uh, how you're honoring God. And I'm not just talking about with tithes and offering. Amen. Churches do need tithes and offering. God requires that, but I'm not just talking about that. How often do you serve him? How, how often do you give him your time? How often do you use your talents to glorify and to promote his kingdom? How often do you do that? Because there are, there are people who tithe and they think that that's going to appease God when they ain't doing nothing else. God wants time, talent, and treasure. And even though the doors to the church building is closed, there is still work to be done. There's still work to be done. And I need somebody to type this in. I will experience overflow through honor. I will experience overflow through honor. I want you to type it in and I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wait. I will experience overflow through honor. I will. I will experience overflow through honor. And some of you are already experiencing it. You're being blessed on every every level. Let me tell you why. Because you have learned how to honor right. OK. Matthew 633 says this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. Okay? If you if you say that verse backwards, we're looking for things and we put God last. Mm -mm. God says, if you put me first, you have put a mandate on me to meet your needs. <laughs> Lord have mercy. If you put me first, if you seek first my kingdom, my righteousness, God says all those other things will be added to your life, meaning that you won't have to work as hard because when you honor God, things just begin to fall in your lap. 
Oh, Lord have mercy. I'm experiencing that right now. And I say, Lord, you know what? I used to I used to have a problem or I used to try to minimize and hide what God was doing for me because I didn't really want to put that out there. But God says, you serve me. You, you know, you, you, you are a blessing to the community. You are serving people. You are feeding the homeless. You are doing all of these things. So he says, watch this. When you serve me and you promote my kingdom, I'm going to bless you openly. I'm going to bless you openly. So if God wants to bless you openly, let him. If God wants to bless, stop hiding your blessings. Stop hiding God's hand on your life. Stop trying to be quiet about everything. And some of you won't even drive your car that God bought you to certain places because you are worried about what they're going to say about your new vehicle. And how is it that you can drive that car that was barely making it <laughs> and you drove it everywhere? And then when God blesses you with something new, you feel guilty for what God is doing in your life. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. If God gives me a new home, then it's a new home. If God gives me a new car, it's a new car. Whatever God does for me, I refuse to minimize it so that haters can be comfortable. Sick of it. Stop minimizing your blessings just to make other people comfortable. When they see what God is doing in your life, at least they'll see that God is still moving. At least they'll see that God is still in the business of blessing his people. He, pr he promised to do that. And so when he does it, then Lord have mercy, stop hiding it. Turn to your neighbor and say, stop hiding your blessings. Go on and type it in. Some of y'all sitting next to somebody watching the video with them. Tell them, stop hiding your blessings. Stop hiding it. Them days are over. If God, if whatever he does, I'm walking in it. And if you do what God requires of you, then you can walk in yours. And if you wasn't too busy hating on the next person, then you can ride with me until God gives you your new car. Cars do come with back seats and passenger seats and some of them. And amen, you could sit there if you wasn't a hater. OK, so secondly, I need you to honor your parents. First, we're talking about honor the Lord. Secondly, we say honor your parents. And I know that usually when we talk about uh, honoring your parents, we usually uh, attribute this verse to kids. But I want to, I'm going to say this, and this is the truth. Some of you are at odds with your parents. You're grown, but you're still at odds, at odds with your parents. Um, I want to encourage you today to work out that relationship with your mother and your father. At least get to a point in your life to where you can honor them, even though they might not deserve it in your eyes. I always say this, and my church has heard this many times. If my parents or if either one of my parents didn't do anything right, they at least did one thing right. Y'all already know what I'm getting ready to say. They got me here. They got me here in this earth. And because I'm here and because they did not abort me and because they allowed me to be here. Now I can fulfill my purpose, which means they did something right. They did something right. And so if you cannot honor your parents for anything else, at least give them honor for making sure you arrived here safely. Now, I said this earlier and I'll reiterate it. Some people you will have to honor from a distance. I forgive you and I honor you as my parent. But the distance might have to remain for some people so that you can 
so that you can continue to honor them. Okay? Deuteronomy 5 verse 16 says this, Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded. Now, now listen, that your days may be long. He said it. See, a lot of, we, we are experiencing a lot, a lot of death in this world and, and some people don't even understand it. They don't get it. Sometimes premature death is due to the fact that a lot of our young people are so dishonorable. Dishonorable. Because the scripture says here that your days may be long. Open your Bible up to Deuteronomy 5 verse 16 and I want you to underline that your days may be long. What is the opposite of long days? Short days. What causes short days? Dishonor. Dishonor. So, so we have to be careful how we handle honor. And then the rest of the verse says this, and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord God is giving you. And so if you, if you just cannot get past and you, you feel like you are just living a curse, you are a walking curse. You feel like, man, I just cannot overcome these obstacles and things are always happening to me. And I just I just can't seem to rise above all of this bad luck. You know, it just seems like things always happen to me. You need to go back and probably fix some things where there has been dishonor. And for some people, you will have to go back and say, look, I apologize if I have disrespected you, I apologize because, because some of you have bitten the hand that has fed you all your life. Some of you are disrespectful to your grandparents. You are disrespectful uh, to your parents. You are disrespectful to your aunts and uncles. You are disrespectful to the people who had a major hand in raising you. They made sure that you ate. They made sure that you had clothes on your back. They made sure that you made it through school. They made sure that you did everything that you were supposed to do and you turned around and you turn on them and that is dishonorable that is dishonorable some of you talk to your parents any type of way man i can't even imagine cursing my mother out i can't imagine cursing you know just cursing people out like that no that's dishonorable i don't even always agree with my my own father but i'm not going to sit around and curse him out because i know that it's a form of dishonor and so sometimes to show honor sometimes means to be quiet. Sometimes in order to remain honorable, you have to be quiet and sometimes you have to keep your distance. But it is a form of dishonor when you start speaking and parents stop teaching your children to dishonor their father who is not in their life. Amen. Because when they get old enough, they'll see who's there and who's not. But you don't need to help them dishonor uh, a missing father or a missing mother or someone who's not active in their life. Because what you're doing, you're preparing them to be uh, to be a walking curse. You are preparing them to have a short life. You are preparing them uh, for things to go bad for them. According to the scripture right here, it, I'm read. I've just read it to you. Deuteronomy 5 and 16. And if you believe the word of God, you go back and you read this word right here. It tells you plain and simple. I don't even have to exegete this text. I don't even have to break it down because it's so plain and simple that if you refuse to honor your father and your mother or your guardian guardians, then you are setting yourself up for things to go bad and you are setting yourself up to have a short life. It's right here in the, in the scripture. These verses are not just for small kids. It's for adults who are still living their childhood hurt. For whatever reason. If you need help trying to get over some things, you ask for help. But don't just sit there and allow yourself to sink in your past if you, are, if you refuse to face it. You cannot fix what you don't face. Somebody type that in. You cannot fix what you won't face. Sometimes a, uh, sometimes a bad life comes from not, not because of what happened to you, but because how you are handling your right now. Let me say it again. Sometimes a bad life 
comes from not what happened to you, but how you are handling life right now. A lot of us have had a smeared past. A lot of us have, have had hurt and have experienced trauma and traumatic circumstances on high levels. But the scripture says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, all things are new. Those things happened to me. Those things happened to you, but I refuse to allow those things to control my right now. I plead the blood of Jesus over every demonic thought that comes in my mind. I plead the blood of Jesus over all of those thoughts and emotions that are wrecking my life. I plead the blood of Jesus over all of that mess that is hindering relationships that I cannot forge because I am mentally incapacitated. Some of this stuff, y'all, we got to start speaking to it. We got to start praying over this stuff because some people are trying to move forward and they cannot move forward because those old thoughts continue to creep up in their life and begin to overtake them. And they cannot function in society because their mind has been overtaken by their past. And I know that somebody's listening to this right now. They're saying Pastor King is talking to me because I'm still having nightmares about what happened to me long ago. I'm still I still struggle and I still start sweating when I think about my past. When is the last time you went and you grabbed that past and you took it to God and say, Lord, I'm leaving this right here at this altar. I'm leaving this right here with you. No longer do I want to be living in torment. No longer do I want to continue to be stagnant in my life. I want to move forward, but there are some things that I need to get off of me and that I need to lay down before you right now. That's what we need to do with our past. And I know it's not always easy. And I know that sometimes it can be difficult. And I know that sometimes it's a process, but listen to me. Do not abandon the process. Do not abandon the process. Some of us are still grieving and some of us are still hurt. Oh, and the people that hurt us are even no longer alive today. That means that we need to deal with this issue. We need to face it head on. We need to humble ourselves before God and say, Lord, I need to give this to you. I need to give this to you. They hurt me, Lord, but I need to give this to you. And I know that some of you are watching this right now. You've been hurt by family members. You've been hurt by people that should have been caring for you. You've been hurt by babysitters. You've been hurt by uncles. You've been hurt by people that should have been loving you and protecting you. And, and because of what happened in your past, it's hard for you to get past and move on with your future. And that's why the devil is going to continue to remind you of what happened to you because he knows that you, if you ever overcome this right here, your life would never be the same again. Your life would never be the same again. Mm. Don't abandon the process. Don't get stuck in your past when your future can be so much brighter. I know I'm ministering to someone right now. Don't get stuck in your past. The reason you cannot even keep a relationship is because you have not dealt with your past and you're bleeding on people who did not even cut you. You got good people in your life and you're running them off because you're so enamored with bitterness. Everything that spews from your mouth is negative. You're so condescending. You speak down on people. You, you, a good word can't even come out of your mouth at this point. And it's because hurting people tend to always hurt other people. And it's time for you to come out of that. It's time for you to come out of that. And it will start first with you honoring God, then honoring your parents. And then you got to honor yourself. You got to honor yourself. Lord have mercy. See, the thing is, I can't control what happened to me. Some of that stuff was beyond my control. But I have power over what will happen. I, 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 can, I can choose what I allow in and out of my life at this point. And let me say this. L listen to me. Listen to me. If you don't hear nothing else, hear me on this right here. 
You need to start screening people when they come in your life. I need to screen you. I need to screen you. No longer am I going to just give people access to the greatest parts of me. No. I need to screen you. I need to ask some questions. Why are you here? Who sent you? What did you come for? What is your purpose? And there's nothing wrong with asking these questions and there's nothing wrong with being inquisitive about who's coming in and out of your life because it's your life. And you only get one life down here and you need to protect your life with everything in you. And some of us, some of us are living in hurt right now because we did not screen people. And then when God gave red flags, we try to pretend that they were white. Hmm. <laughs> Let me say this for those of you who are listening to this and your fathers, the scripture says a father's provoke that provoke not thy children to, to uh, anger. In essence, I know so many I know so many young people and I know so many kids who are are living and walking in anger right now. And the scripture talks about uh, uh, and it teaches the father not to provoke them. What what the, I, I wrote down the definition for the word provoke here and provoke. <clears throat> it means to um, exasperate. It means that the, the scripture is telling you fathers do not exasperate your children. What What the scripture is saying here, do not weary your children with your nonsense. What he's saying is, is, is be your children's father and, and stop trying to be their friend and stop trying to be on a level with them. Raise your children, train them in the way that they should go. And even when they're old, they, they won't depart from, from the way. And so, so when the scripture, and, and I noticed it didn't say nothing about mothers. You know, it's, it's, it, it gives the mandate and the order to the father. Fathers, provoke not thy children to anger. And what do we have in our society today? We have a lot of angry young men and we have a lot of angry young women. Why? Because a lot of them are looking for their father and he is nowhere to be found. And if he is there, he is not proactive in their lives. And I know that some of you just want to get off the live. You don't want to hear that. He's bashing fathers. No, I'm not bashing fathers. I'm teaching you what the scripture says. Because a lot of fathers think that just because they are in the house, that they that's good enough. Just because I provide, that's good enough. No, you need to be mentally inclined to what your children are doing. Or they're going to become angry and feel like you are not a part of their life. You can be there and still be absent. I think it's worse to be there and absent than it is to be gone and absent. And so the word provoke also means to vex. It means to vex. It also means to stir up. It means to stir up or to arouse or to call forth feelings. And so, and so what the scripture is saying that fathers, if you are not the father that you're supposed to be to your children, you call forth feelings in those kids that would not have been there. Let me say it one more time. Fathers. Fathers. When you are not proactive in the lives of your children. The word provoke means that you exasperate them. You vex them. It also means that you arouse them and you call forth feelings that they would not have had to deal with if you had been what you should be to your children. So a lot of the anger that we experience with our youth in our communities, in our schools being disrespectful are feelings that have been called forth from fathers and sometimes mothers. <sighs> Mm, 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 mm. Let me let me just go ahead and give you this last point. Honor one another. It's important that we honor one another. First Peter two and 17 says, honor everyone, honor everyone, honor everyone. And then it says, love the brotherhood. It says, love the brotherhood. 
And then lastly, it says, fear God. Fear God, honor the emperor. Remember this, honor gets you indoors that dishonor locks you out of. Somebody type that. Honor gets you indoors that dishonor locks you out of. So go ahead. Honor gets you indoors that dishonor locks you out of. Okay. Romans 12 verse 10 says this. Love one another with brotherly affection. I got to bring IG back in. Love, love one another with brotherly affection. And then it says, outdo one another in showing honor. Outdo one another in showing honor. If we're going to compete against one another, let it not be over something of no value. If we're going to compete against one another, let it not be over something of no value. Let it be the type of competition that at the end of it, everybody will be a better individual. If we're going to compete with one another, let it be a good competition so that at the end of the competition, that both of us or all of us are better than we were when we started. No one loses if we all chooses, uh, choose to honor well. No one loses if we all choose to honor well. And so, once again, honor the Lord. Secondly, honor your parents. And thirdly, honor one another. Okay? You know, so, and, and as I said before, honor will get you indoors. That dishonor will keep you locked out of it. And I want to say this uh, to somebody. Uh, if, if you're listening to this, uh, this broadcast and, and you feel like you're stuck... Um, this is what I want you to do. I want you to pray. I want you to pray and ask God to reveal, to reveal every unhidden or every hidden place in your life so that he can reveal to you where you need to go and what you need to straighten out. And I said on, at, at the beginning of this message that, that some people will have to humble themselves and go back to some places and to make it right. Okay. Some of you have been living in vengeance. You, you, there are people that you want to get revenge against. There are people that you want to get back. There are people that you want to show them that they got the wrong one this time. Uh, I'm gonna get them. Um, it's, it's green light. You know, when I see them, it's green light. It, I'm on go, <clears throat> you know, uh, on, on sight, you know, it's going down. Listen, I'm going to give you a scripture because somebody stayed on here and God wants me to give you this verse right here. These verses. And uh, and I believe that since you're still here, that you're receptive to this truth. And uh, this is for those of you who want to get back. I'm going to show them that they crossed me for the last time. Mm -mm. This is what the word of the Lord says for you. He says, um. And I know this is going to be very difficult, but you can do it. Uh, he, he says, bless those who persecute you. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Lord have mercy. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. And then verse 17 says, never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men, if possible. If possible, somebody type that in real quick. If possible, if possible, if possible. Meaning that some circumstances are impossible to go around. But the scripture says, if possible. There it is. So far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Never take your own vengeance, beloved. But leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay. <laughs> he says, but if your enemy is hungry, feed him. Mm. And if he is thirsty, give him drink. 
for in so doing you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's the word of God. Romans chapter 12. And so uh, I want some people to be free. You know, I don't preach just to be preaching. I preach so that people can get free. And I know that God does speak through me. Um, and I believe you all know that too. Otherwise, you wouldn't even be on the live. So um, there's something that God has said to you that specifically sticks out. And I believe that God is saying to you, I need you to fix this today. I need you to fix this today. Uh, but I need to warn some of you in fixing or pursuing peace and trying to fix some circumstances. Some people are not going to be receptive. Some people are not going to be receptive. And what the enemy is trying to do, he's trying to get you to be emotional all over again. He's trying to get you to say, forget it. But I need you to understand that once you go and try to rectify a situation, once you go and you do what God has placed on your heart, then the ball is out of your court and it is placed in the hands of God. You are not responsible for somebody else's response to you pursuing peace. Let me say it again. You are not responsible for the response of someone else when you are pursuing peace with humility with humility be humble be humble don't go don't go with with arrogance and your head all lifted high saying well uh we're gonna go ahead and talk about this now and go ahead and fix this i know no 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 before you go make sure that your humility is intact and then you leave the results to God. And as Patsy says, if they don't receive you, shake the dust off of your feet and move forward. Don't ever let it be said about you that you didn't even try to fix it. Amen. Okay, so, so learn, learn the honor code because honor is the key to your next level. Honor is the key. To your next level well there may be someone on here uh, I always like to give an invitation because some people may not have the power to walk in this and you may not have the power to walk in this because you don't have a relationship with God for yourself and I want to invite you to give God your heart give God your heart let him fix you let him change you. Let him take you through the metamorphosis of leaving the caterpillar stage and becoming a butterfly. Let him, let him dissect your heart. Let him fix every broken place and every wounded space. Let, let God do that. Let him in. Some of you have been hurt so bad by people that you've locked God out. God wants to come in. But he wants you to open the door. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And so uh, today your whole life can change. Today your whole life can change based on the decisions that you make right now. And so if you're here and you want God to change your life, ask him to come in. Ask him to come into your heart. The scripture simply says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I could walk you through a prayer, um, which is not biblical. <clears throat> but the scripture says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised his son from the dead, you shall be saved. And also you cannot honor God if you don't honor his son whom he sent. Some people are always talking about I honor God, but I don't believe in Jesus. Well, you, if you, you don't honor God if you can't honor his son. You know, and it's, it, the scripture says that. You know, when you've seen him, you've seen me. I and the father are one. And so if you don't know him, just ask him to come into your heart. OK, also, um, if you feel like you've given your life to Christ and you want him to come in, please send me an inbox and let me know. Uh, Pastor, today 
I have invited the Lord into my life and I need to be discipled, meaning that I just need to be taught. I need somebody to walk with me. I need training. I need I need someone to walk this journey with me until I can stand on my own two feet. You know, just just inbox me and let me know and we will connect you with somebody who will walk with you. Amen. You know, so um, if you want to become a part of our virtual church, uh, you can just uh, inbox that and we'll send it to our administrators and and we've had many people to join IPC uh, virtual uh, teachings, you know, so we, we thank God for you all. Uh, we thank God for IPC, who's always willing to reach out and to love on people. Uh, we will not stop doing that. Uh, also, if you want to give uh, to our church, you know, uh, you can do that by cash apping Inner Peace Church. Or you can give online by texting GIVE to 423 three zero one five five four five and then it'll go straight to IPC or you can go to our website which is www.ipc I mean innerpeacechurch.org you know you can give online that way you know so um but uh if you have any special needs you you got certain areas and you just need somebody to walk with you through certain uh scenarios and certain situations that you're trying to work out that's what we're here for the doors of the church building is closed but the church is still open that means that we are still actively uh pursuing god's kingdom agenda you know uh we believe uh the word of god we believe that god will do everything that he promised that he would do we believe that his word is the answer uh that you need for your life you know so um this is it right here you know so pray and ask god to show you where honor went wrong in your life and then uh, go back, show honor, and also teach honor. You know, because honor is best taught by being seen. And don't expect everybody to understand it, okay? Please share this video. If you don't mind, please share because we like the word to go out. Um, so many people have been blessed through our broadcast because you all have shared the video. Uh, so many people have reached out to me and uh, they've told me they've been blessed. They're not even on my friend list, but they were able to see the video because you all shared it. And so if you think the broadcast is good enough to share uh, or if it was a blessing to you, uh, pass the blessing on to someone else. Um, because honor is the uh, is 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 what's going to get you to your next level. You know, so uh, I love you all. I thank you all so much for uh, being on here. I hope that you all have an amazing Sunday, an amazing week, and I'm going to pray us out of here. Father, we thank you so much for what you've done. We thank you for every person uh, who listened to the broadcast, who were blessed. Uh, we pray, God, that you would uh, just help them to uh, get in position and that you would make sure that their posture is right, uh, that you would help them to work out uh, different situations in their lives, that they may get back to that place of honor because we know that honor attracts you. And wherever you find honor, God, you uh, you also elevate. So we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're doing in this season. We thank you for the church, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We thank you for the healing that is going forward in the land. We thank you, God, for the mindsets that are being changed. We thank you, God, for people who are drawing closer to you in these times. And we give you honor for that, Lord. We love you. We thank you. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who gave his life that we may have eternal life. For without the shedding of his blood, there will be no remission or forgiveness of sin. And so bless your people, God, and we'll be careful to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I'll talk to you all soon. I love you all. Bye. Please share the video.